So I've gotten a lot of questions about iris. You know that I have not a ton of iris, but I have a nice line here. These are all bearded iris. They're all old varieties from my great grandma's farm. And iris take a little bit of maintenance. I'm gonna say every four to five to six years. So if they start not blooming as much, it's probably because they need to be reset. Iris eventually kind of grow on top of themselves. So they have rhizomes. That's what they're roots are like and they start getting really compiled and tight and compacted and growing over each other and then that kind of suffocates them and they don't send the blooms out near as much so i can tell these are getting to that point so what that means is i actually just literally need to reset them dig them up spread them out slightly probably not plant as many as are currently and then put them back in the ground so first I'm going to trim them. Usually you kind of want to deadhead them or cut off the blooms after they're done blooming. And for that you could just take off that bloom stalk obviously, because that's going to help them not send energy into their blooms anymore and put it back into the plant. But when I go to reset them, I find it easier to work with if I just cut them back about halfway. And I'm only going to do one type or variety of iris at this time because I wanna make sure not to get them mixed up because we have all different colors. We kind of have a section of each color going down. So I wanna make sure I'm only gonna be working with one color at a time. So to do that, I'm gonna first dig these up that I just trimmed. And if you don't get all the leaves off, that's completely fine. But once I start digging them up, I can kind of show you. You can see they kind of come up in sections and almost one big mass and you kind of have to break them up that means that it's time to do this. So if I bring them out here, shake off some of that ground, and you can see that these are just really starting to grow on top of each other. You have lots of rhyme zones in there, and each one is trying to grow and suffocate the other. So what we do is we just separate them out, and then we're only gonna plant a few back in so they have fresh room to grow, can actually start creating fresh growth, and then have better blooms. Let me take the rest of these out. So I'm gonna start picking just a few really nice pieces and then start putting them back in. And sometimes when you're looking, you'll see some have a little rot. Um, you don't wanna use those obviously if you do, but you want nice, firm, full pieces. They're really nice rhizomes actually. So we'll see here how many, I'm gonna go through these. And this is why, especially in old gardens, you saw iris everywhere because they're like Amish friendship bread. They're the gift that just keeps going. You kind of just keep producing them then eventually you give them away to your friends and say, hey, I dug iris. And they're one of the hardiest flowers. Do you know that I live in Iowa, you can have literally polar vortexes come through here and still somehow, I have before had them where they're just sitting like this all winter long. They live. You guys, these things just want to live. Okay. I have now a nice clump, and so we're just going to kind of reset them now. As you can see, I put leaves on here in the fall, and it acts as a natural compost and just goes back into the soil. But I'm going to expose that fresh dirt right here where I just dug them up from. And I'm going to start taking some of my rhizomes with those little bit of leaves attached. That way you know where you're putting them. Iris don't like to go too deep. Even though they do push up and we're resetting them, you wanna just cover their Ryan zone and come up just like maybe an eighth of an inch on their stalk here. If they're too deep, they don't like to bloom. I know this seems like a lot of work and some people say, why on earth would you mess with this? You mess with it because iris, especially bearded ones, are the most beautiful flower. They smell amazing. They have like a sweet, almost, I don't know, some of them have like a grape-like scent. And why would you wanna do without that? Life is too short not to enjoy a good iris. So I'm planning back in about, looks like five or six of these rhizomes. This one I kinda of wanna dig down and put in cause it kinda of curves down. And then I am just gonna put the dirt back over them and be good to go. As you can see there, I have a nice clump now, about five or six. 
and I have all these that I don't need. I'm gonna keep them separate though so I know what color and what variety is what. But then I'm just gonna keep going down this whole row and doing that. So I have fresh iris and next year there'll be better blooms, bigger blooms, they will be happier. This is what you do with iris. And so, when do you know to do this? When they don't bloom as well and when you start seeing those roots start stacking on top of each other and getting really tight and coming out of the ground and heaving up, it's time to do this. Usually it's around that five year mark, but it kind of depends. I like to do it right after they bloom. So for me, that's early June usually. They're done blooming by then. So I can enjoy the blooms and then I cut them off and redo them. If you do it before they bloom, you're obviously probably gonna make so they don't bloom because that's gonna really stress them out and they won't have the energy to still set a bloom. So you wanna do it after they bloom. So then next year's bloom will not be infected. So the only pest that I really know of is a borer in the roots, iris borer. I don't know if it has an actual specific name, but it actually lays eggs on the leaves and then they hatch right when the leaves are coming up, bore down into the plant and eat at the roots and they make these holes in them, slowly deteriorating the plant. The roots start rotting, they don't bloom as well, leaves start dying. So if you see those effects, like leaves dying out of nowhere, dig them up, look. You can maybe see the little pink worms that are boring in, eating on them. Get rid of any of the contaminated ones and then treat them with a spinosad. Just go to your local garden center, ask them for a spinosad. It is a safer alternative to just lay a strong insecticide and it will treat and kill the larva so they don't keep eating on your plant. So it's a quick little thing about iris that sometimes if you're having an issue, that could be what it is. So make sure to let me know if you like this video. Tag someone who needs this information, can follow along on all the future videos because I do these for you, they're your questions, so keep asking so I know what ones to make. Because your yards can be just like my yard because if I can do it, you can do it. So let's all garden together and keep going.